Hello, fellow members of the Midnight Society. Welcome back to another episode review from the show Are You Afraid of the Dark? Last time, we covered the tale of the Super Specs, a story about fools, magic, and parallel universes. Tonight's narrative comes from the mind of Kiki and features mad science used for immortality. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this Season 1, Episode 7, The Tale of the Captured Souls. We open on the Midnight Society, trying to amuse themselves while waiting for Kiki to arrive. Suddenly, the group is assaulted by bright flashes from what appears to be the pop-up... Papa, Papa, Papa... Paparazzi. Turns out to just be Kiki wielding a piece of ancient photo-taking technology, the Polaroid camera. All this in Polaroid sharp, vibrant colors. So look around and shoot a pack. Of instant pictures today. Everyone comments on the photo Kiki has taken of them before urging her to start her story. Kiki collects the photos while mentioning that some cultures believe cameras steal your soul. Hmm. Foreshadowing? I mean, why, why, why would she bring it up if it wasn't crucial to the story? I mean, that would, just, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> Kiki's tale begins on a shot of what I can only imagine is the ugliest house in Canada. She explains that there was an ad in a travel magazine about the house stating it was the perfect place to spend a relaxing vacation. See, this is, this is why you don't book on Airbnb. It's never what it says it is. Our main character, Danielle, and her parents arrive in a convertible that's... Well, it's almost as ugly as the house is. You can't park that here! Danielle immediately starts house-shaming stating that the place looks boring and that they should have gone to the ocean. Keep in mind that while not the ocean, there's a lake stretching farther than the eye can see right behind her when she says this. Her dad responds by asking if she's getting too old to have fun with them. Wait. What did that have to do with what she said? She said that the house looks boring and you should have gone to the ocean and you respond with, are you getting too old to have fun with us? What? That, that has nothing to do with anything that she... Okay. All right. Look, it sounds like the writer was just trying to be clever with more foreshadowing, but it just it feels really out of place. Huh. That's just lazy writing. I'd also like to take a moment to give my sympathies to Danielle. Her parents are one of those gross couples that wear almost matching outfits. Like they've both got the mom jeans on and the sunglasses and their shirts have a similar color pattern. And I'll bet they like to act like cool teenagers, too. All right. Then let's do it. Okay, so... Maybe Danielle is getting too old to have fun with them. Danielle rushes to the front door, finding it locked. She shocks her finger on a small mirror while searching for a key before the door is opened by the proprietor of the house, an undead cast member from a production of Newsies? I... Anyway, this creeper puts out serial killer vibes immediately. Well, hello? <laughs> and it doesn't stop there. After introducing himself to Danielle's parents, he dials the lechery up to 11. This must be your lovely daughter. If I were one of those parents, I'd be like, Hey Danielle, what was that you were saying about the ocean? But these two, they don't sense any stranger danger and they just head right into the house. The creeper's name is Peter and he tells the family that they're lucky because no other guests are booked for the week. Yeah, I'm sure that's just a coincidence. One thing that Danielle notices immediately is the unusual number of mirrors everywhere in the house. She gets shocked again when touching the frame of one of them and Peter remarks that the old house just has some faulty wiring, but Danielle is suspicious. The wiring is quite old. In the mirror? Frankly, she has every right to be. My question is, why do her parents not care? The first mention of faulty wiring in an old house that sends electric shocks through items hanging on the walls? And I'm finding a nearby Motel 6 for the rest of my vacation. Peter takes Danielle and her parents to what I'm calling the pink room, where Danielle will be staying. Uh, Danielle's mother asks where Peter's parents are so they can check in. He states they're on a cruise, and he'll check them in. Uh, when Danielle asks if Peter is there all alone, he responds with... Not anymore. <laughs> Our alarm bell's not going off in every one of their heads by now. Best case scenario, some neglectful parents left their son with consumption at their ugly house to creep on young girls. Worst case scenario, he murdered his parents and every guest that has come to stay at this place. Get out! But no. They just respond with, Strange little guy. We cut to Danielle and her dad playing catch outside the house. 
Peter remarks that Danielle has a good arm, which irritates her. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, she hates being called Danielle and prefers Danny, which is why I am exclusively referring to her as Danielle for this whole video. Hashtag Team Consumption Kid. Danielle's dad convinces Peter to play with him, but he, he moves so slowly that he can't catch the ball. While Peter goes off to try to retrieve it, Danielle starts complaining about him, calling him a geek. Really? That's rich coming from the girl who has her summer shirt tucked into her shorts. Daniel's mom comes outside with a Polaroid camera and attempts to take a photo of everyone. Before she can snap it though, Peter recoils from the camera like a vampire being exposed to a crucifix. Smile at me, buddy. No! He convinces everyone that he's fine and offers to take a photo of the family. After snapping the picture, he, uh, well, he pulls this subtle move that no one else seems to notice. Seriously, how have these people made it this far in life? They're so oblivious, I'm surprised they haven't been lured into a windowless van with promises of candy and murder already. Later on, Danielle's on the second floor when she hears a noise above her. She opens a door to find a softball that's rolled down some stairs leading up to the third floor. She follows them up to find Peter's room. While looking around, Peter pops out of another room, startling Danielle in the process. After that, I can't tell if he's just making small talk or if he's coming on to her, but he has all the charm of Anakin Skywalker. I always admire a girl with great physical strength. Please don't look at me like that. Why not? It makes me feel uncomfortable. Sorry, milady. Danielle notices a picture from 1920 with a boy in it that looks like Peter. He says that it was his grandfather. She then finds an experiment that Peter claims was also started by his grandfather. It's a transference device that sucks life from one thing and transfers it to another thing. You know how science experiments do. In this case, some roses are sacrificed to sustain some geraniums. Danielle attempts to touch the device, which causes Peter to jump up and display, well, the most emotion we've seen the whole episode. Don't! Peter then takes some sort of weird pleasure in the fact that Danielle has a zit on her face. She reacts, as well any teen with a potential zit would, by running to a mirror to survey the damage. Once again, she shocks her hand upon touching the mirror's frame, only this mirror's freestanding, so ain't no faulty wiring here, but Danielle's too fixated on the zit to notice. We cut back to Peter, who pushes a button that turns his room into a mad science lab. A monitor shows that he has cameras watching each family member. Well, this took a weird turn. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is not where I thought they were going with this little psychopath. You know, serial killer? Most likely. Vampire? Maybe. Date rapist? Definitely. Mad scientist? Didn't see it coming. Peter activates his machine and steps into a chamber of sorts. We then see the watch hands on Danielle's father's watch spinning quickly as if to signify the passage of time, all while Peter's having some sort of weird orgasm in the chamber. <laughs> Daniel's dad also seems to notice the rapid movement on his watch, and then sees that he has some gray hair that he didn't have moments before. Okay. Look, I know they've ignored all the other signs, but surely now they know that something is up, and the family flees the house for some coastal scenery. Right? Right? They don't, do they? No. No, why? Why would they? We cut back to the Midnight Society, where Kiki has laid out all the pictures she took of the individual group members on the ground. The gang starts asking a load of questions. You know, same questions that uh, maybe a young viewer might be asking at that point. Gary asks about the mirrors inside the chamber Peter got into. Well, it turns out that Kiki not only brought a camera prop, but also... Mirrors. Back in the story, Peter, Danielle, and her father are outside again playing ball. Peter is looking far less pale, Danielle's father has more gray in his hair, and Danielle has her shirt untucked, proving that she too is undergoing a change. Peter hits the ball back behind some bushes, and when Danielle tries to go get it, he gets very short with her before going to get it himself. Danielle's dad then says he's too tired to keep playing, and we cut inside the house to see Danielle's mom falling asleep while looking at a scrapbook. How is no one alarmed by this? If I went to sleep one night and woke up older without wishing on a Zoltar machine first, I'd have some questions about it. Daniel's parents are acting and looking like senior citizens and she's not even phased by it. 
It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Danielle's mom mentions that Danielle's acne is getting worse, prompting her to run to the bathroom mirror to investigate it. While she's there, she shocks her hand again on the medicine cabinet mirror. In anger, she opens the cabinet and slams it closed again, breaking the mirror. Behind it, she finds something. She calls for her dad, who, upon seeing it, says that it must just be the old wiring. Okay. Okay. You know, I'd, I'd like to say that maybe Peter's machine robs you of intelligence, but these people haven't shown any signs of intelligence from the start. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? Don't need any help from me, sir. That's right! Danielle's dad scolds her for breaking the mirror before leaving to go take a nap. Uh, Danielle instead throws a glass of water on the device in the mirror, causing one of the monitors in Peter's lab to go out. Uh, apparently, Peter was in his chamber while this was happening, and the malfunction causes him to exit coughing dramatically. <coughs> Danielle is finally convinced that something nefarious is afoot. She ventures out to the bushes where Peter wouldn't let her go earlier, and finds a bunch of headstones, presumably of Peter's family, or murder victims. Uh, one headstone says Peter Curlin III, which is how Peter introduced himself. Born 1907 and no death date. Hold on. Who, who has a gravestone when they haven't died? Right? Like, that's not a thing. Like, you don't, I don't care if you're an immortal. You don't erect a headstone with your original birth date on it to create suspicion from anyone who sees it. Danielle also finds some strange headstones shaped like figures on a pedestrian crossing sign. Uh, these headstones have a bunch of tick marks on them. You know, signifying Peter's victims. I mean, at least that's the conclusion that should be drawn, but alas, our hero just starts moving mirrors around and until this happens. You've gotten old in a couple of days! I love that it took her this long to realize the aging process her parents have gone through. I, I really just want to see this family in other horror movie scenarios, just oblivious to the danger around them. Mom, there's a man with a machete wearing a hockey mask outside. Huh. Well, that gardener is really into his sports. Let's go say hi. Danielle goes up to Peter's room to talk to him, but finds it empty. She pushes the button that transforms his room into the lab, allowing her to see that he has hidden cameras set up in the house. She notices an old man wearing Peter's clothes downstairs with her parents, so she heads down to meet the new house guest. Some tea, Danielle? And the winner for previous reveal in a kid's horror show goes to... Peter from the Tale of the Captured Souls! Danielle runs outside, grabbing her bag with the camera in it on the way. She heads back to the gravestones in an attempt to figure out what is going on. Peter surprises her there, giving her some exposition, and even though the plot is basically being spoon-fed to her, she continues to respond with, After tonight, you'll be all alone. What do you mean I'll be all alone? How dumb is this family? Do you know what this is doing to me? It's hurting me to even joke about it anymore. Peter explains that Danielle hasn't been as affected as her parents because she's been avoiding the mirrors in the house. He offers to let her live and stay by his side, being young forever. Whoa. Whoa. Time out. Uh-uh. No. No, you're saying that this 85-year-old in a teen's body wants this actual teen as his immortal girlfriend? It's like... It's super... It's super gross. I just, need a, I just need a minute. I, <laughs> Danielle isn't having it and snaps a picture of Peter as he reaches for her. Just as before, he recoils, which allows her to get away. Danielle tries to convince her parents to leave, but they are too old, too tired, and let's face it, too stupid to listen. She grabs a mirror and heads up to Peter's room where he's trying to finish the process which would restore his youth and kill her parents. Danielle confronts him, claiming that she knows he's stealing souls to stay young. Well, that is a hell of a leap from the previous scene where she was like, Who are you? What are you doing to us? She turns the tables on Peter using the mirror, and before reversing the machine, she gives her heroic catchphrase. You messed with the wrong girl, Petey boy. That... That's it? That's it? That... What... What was that voice? That... Oh, no, come on. Surely that's not how she finishes him. And don't call me Danielle. I suppose that's better? Peter's machine is destroyed! 
he is turned back into an old man, and Danielle's parents' youth is restored, but uh, they're, they're all still as dumb as bricks. Um, as they're preparing to leave, old man Peter tells Danielle through the front door that he is going out back to join the rest of his family. That's like, that's real depressing. That's, yeah. That's what, Peter, what gives? Come on, man, you're, you're only 90, living in a house that you can rent out on a beautiful lake. Turn that frown upside down. Daniel's mother finds a picture of an old man and asks Danielle if she knows who it is. Danielle's response is actually pretty savage. Just looks like some sad old man. The story ends with Danielle's parents finally taking her to the ocean. I have so many questions. Kiki, wh why would you kick your story off with a legend about cameras stealing souls when that doesn't come up at all? Like at all. As far as I can tell, Peter was stealing youth through mirrors. The cameras didn't steal anything, but instead revealed the true age of Peter, but like, even that doesn't make sense. Why didn't Peter look like an old man at the start of the episode before siphoning off her parents' youth? He just looked like a pasty kid who never went outside. But then, when their youth is restored, he's turned into an old man. What? I, what? I'm exhausted. I think this story is stealing my soul. <laughs> Kiki finishes her tale by saying that sometimes cameras do tell the truth. Uh, actually, Kiki, they, they tell the truth quite often. You know, unless Photoshop is involved. Um, anyway, the episode ends with the group taking a 90s selfie. Smile, everybody! Now for the review. This episode was frustrating. There was a good story in here somewhere, but it was marred by a convoluted plot and bad acting. The idea of someone from the turn of the century stealing youth via mad science in order to stay young forever is it's fascinating. To be fair, the production of this show is a very small budget and, you know, this, this kind of story probably needs at least an hour-long format to work. That being said, the creepiest part of the episode was Peter himself, but he's defeated in such a silly way that he just, I don't know, he never actually presented a threat. One highlight from the episode was the music. Every time Peter fired up his lab, the organ music that played gave the scene a just a real classic movie monster feel. Younger me wouldn't have found this tale scary, but college me did have Peter's haircut. The acting in this episode is some of the worst I have seen from any episode thus far. It was terrible across the board, with one notable exception. Uh, Danielle was just out of her depth. You know, none of, none of her lines had any real emotion behind them. I never felt like she was scared, which made it hard for me to be scared for her. Peter, on the other hand, this, he was having a great time as the villain. He was super creepy and had moments of just being downright unsettling. Your parents are checking out tonight. What? Oh, yes. We've entered the final phase. It won't be long now. The two adult actors in the episode were Danielle's parents, and they were, they were worse than she was. I, like, it almost felt like the parents of the actress playing Danielle got roped into playing her parents in the episode and were asked to do things they were just like, not comfortable with. Kiki, for as much sass as you throw at other Midnight Society members, I expected more from you. Unfortunately, the tale of the captured souls does not meet the approval of the Midnight Society. I'm gonna smack you. What did you all think of Kiki's story? Did you see it as a kid? What were some of your favorite tales from the series? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check out our next episode about the tale of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Until next time, are you afraid of the dark? <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Midnight Society episodes go up. And we've got a ton of other cool shows on the channel, so stick around. You might find something else that you like.